So related rates is a really fun idea. It's a great application of the chain rule. So the first thing I really want you to know about related rates is to look at the chain rule and write it out like this. The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to, and this is how I like to do it, the derivative of y, the derivative of x, and then some other thing here. Let's just go with du, we're used to that. All right, writing it out that way is going to be really handy when it comes to related rates questions. Now I'm going to show you these related rates questions. We're just going to dive in and do a bunch of them. Learn by doing. All right, so I'll let you read this question. Uh, let's look at what it's asking us for, first of all. It says, find the rate, find the rate at which the height of the water is increasing. All right, so we can see that height is represented by h. So we're going to find the rate at which the height is increasing with respect to time. Now, this is a related rates question, so we know it's going to have something to do with this um, chain rule type thing. So let's write out dh, dt, and then what's the third thing that we're doing this in relation to? Let's look at the other piece of information. A rectangular prism is being filled with water at a rate of something, 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 meters cubed per second. All right, so the other thing, the other variable here is volume in meters cubed. So the change in volume with respect to time and the change in height with respect to the change in volume. So now let's look at this. We know that volume is increasing at a rate of 0 0.00042 meters cubed per second. So Volume is changing with respect to time at 0 0.00042. But I don't know how this is happening, this dH dV. So what we need to do is find some sort of relationship between dH dV, or some sort of relationship between H and V. All right, let's think about this. This is a rectangular prism. We know that the volume of a rectangular prism is equal to length times width times height. We know that the length is 3 and the width is 2, so 3 times 2 times h. We get volume equals 6h. This is a really important part of a related rates question because we can see that v and h are now related in some way. So, if we want to know the derivative of h with respect to v, the easiest way is to make h the subject. So h is equal to v over 6. And the derivative of h with respect to v is going to be equal to the derivative of h, which is 1 sixth. All right, so the change in height with respect to volume is equal to 1 over 6, which means that the change in height with respect to time is equal to this here, whatever that happens to be. Now, it is vitally important that you consider your units at this stage. So the change in height, height is going to be measured in metres. The change in height in metres with respect to time, and time is in seconds. I'll show you in the next example another way to come up with what that unit is. All right, so you can read this question, but I'm looking at it, I look at it, and I know straight away that it's a related rates question because I've practiced them so much. And I see when its radius is two cents, find the rate at which the area of the puddle is increasing. So I'm trying to find the rate of change of the area with respect to time. That's what I'm trying to find. Now it's a related rates question, so I'm going to say the derivative of uh, the change in area with respect to time, and then there's some variable that links those two. What's the variable? Uh, it looks like there's going to be a radius. The radius of the puddle increases at a rate of 3 centimetres per minute. All right, so there's a change in radius and a change in the area with respect to radius. All right, now I said in the previous example that I'm going to talk to you about how to come up with what the units are. And that's by looking at the units of each of these. So... Uh, the units for this one, radius is measured in centimetres. Just put it here. Radius is measured in centimetres and time is measured in minutes. You can see that there. So centimetres per minute. 
we can see that area is going to be measured because radius is going to be measured in centimeters area is going to be measured in centimeters squared and radius we already figured out is going to be measured in centimeters centimeter squared per centimeter which means that area with respect to time the way that we figure out what this unit is going to be is by looking at this unit because that respond, corresponds to the area and this unit because that corresponds to the time. So the first one, the numerator here and the denominator here, so these units are going to be centimetres squared per minute. Just something to think about. Alright, so back into the question and you'll feel the flow of these questions is, is relatively predictable. Um, the radius of the puddle increases at a rate of 3 centimetres per minute. Radius with respect to time is equal to 3, 3 centimetres per minute. But we don't know how the area is changing with respect to the radius, but we can find a relationship between area and radius. Now, this is a circular puddle, a circular puddle that's increasing in size over time. We know that the area of a circle is equal to, actually let's do that over here, the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. And we want to know the rate at which the area is changing with respect to time, change in area with respect, uh, with respect to radius, sorry, and that's going to be equal to 2 pi r, just the derivative of pi r squared. So putting that in there, 2 pi r. That means that the rate of change of area with respect to time is going to be 6 pi r. Now this is different to the previous example because the previous example spat out just a unit. The rate of change of height with respect to time is a constant 0.00007 meters per second. But in this example, the rate of change of the area with respect to time is not constant. It's a, it's a function. So, when its radius is 2 centimetres, find the rate at which the area of the puddle is increasing. So, if we sub r equals 2 into dA dt, we'll know what the rate of it, what the rate of increase is at radius 2. When the radius of the circle is 2, we'll know at what rate it's increasing. So, it's increasing at 6 times pi times 2, 12 pi. And again, thinking about our units, it's centimetres squared per minute. You'll notice this is an interesting one because the rate of change of area with respect to time is being given in a third variable. It's being given with respect to... It's give, being given with r as our variable there, not with... Um, t as our variable, which is how you would normally expect it. But this is the power of these questions. Okay, so let's take a look at this question here. It says, calculate the rate at which the volume is increasing. So, um, actually, let's write that out. The rate at which the volume is increasing with respect to time is going to be equal to... Okay, we know dv, we know dt, Okay, and what's our other variable here? A metal cube is being heated so that side length, side length. All right, change in side length. Okay, and now let's take a look at this one. Is increasing at the rate of 0.02 centimetres per hour. The side length is increasing at the rate. Okay, so side length with respect to time is equal to 0.02 centimetres per centimetres per hour. And now we need to find a relationship between V and L. Now it's a cube that's increasing. So the volume of a cube is equal to L cubed, which means that the change in volume with respect to the side length is equal to 3L squared. So we've got 3L squared there. Uh, 3 times 0.02 times L squared. We have 0.06 L squared. Units, volume with respect to time. Now the volume is going to be in these units cubed, so centimetres cubed, and the time appears to be in hours, centimetres cubed per hour. 
We're not finished though, because it says calculate the rate at which the volume is increasing when the side length is 5 centimetres. So we sub 5 into the change in volume with respect to time for L. And when we do that, we're going to get our answer. 1.5 centimetres cubed per hour. Relatively straightforward. All right, three quick examples there. You can see it's relatively straightforward. You follow a pattern there. You write it out. Chain rules, your friend. 